All right. Um, well, I hope, I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, a few pointers before we get started. Uh, we will be recording the presentation, the webinar. So in case you're not able to stay for the whole duration, or if you came in late, I guess you wouldn't hear this, but we will be recording this. Um, so feel free to also share it afterwards. Um, if you have any questions, uh, particularly if they're pertaining to a certain slide, uh, feel free to drop them on the chat uh, right here. So I'll be checking that out um, and we'll be reviewing them as we go. Um, okay, so let's get started. So uh, the agenda for today, uh, as usual, uh, I'll start clarifying uh, the basics uh, for the topic, in this case, of course, NFTs. Um, then I'll dive into a bit more um, detailed part, uh, looking into the growth uh, and key metrics of the NFT space from several different perspectives. Uh, and finally, I'll, I'll look into the evolution of NFTs so far um, and how I expect them uh, based on data and what's going on um, for the space to continue to evolve. All right, so let's, let's get into it. Uh, but before, uh, as usual, I'll dive into some quick updates about what we've been doing at Into the Block. Uh, we've launched uh, some key partnerships with a Turkish exchange called Ege Money, um, another one with uh, crypto bank Mercury Cash, uh, as well as many more partnerships that we've been working on. Uh, hopefully we'll share more details of those soon. And in terms of our platform, um, we've actually been working on multiple uh, updates at the same time. Uh, so we're hoping to release these soon. Uh, we're releasing uh, mining indicators, uh, some of which I touched on my previous webinar three weeks ago. Uh, if you didn't get the chance to see it and you're interested in uh, mining and the Bitcoin having in particular, uh, feel free to check it out uh, in our YouTube page. Um, we're also working on Polygon uh, indicators. Um, so, of course, Polygon has seen a massive increase in activity and uh, flows of um, money, both ETH and Matic and other tokens going into the Polygon sidechain. So we will be covering those in a um, specified section within Into the Block. Uh, we're also working on revamping our ownership metrics uh, that should come in the next couple of months. Uh, finally, um, we're working on NFT insights. Uh, we've been teasing this for a while uh, and I'll be touching, uh, be able to touch on a lot of the metrics that we're working on uh, throughout the webinar. Um, all right. So um, I imagine if you're in this webinar, uh, you already know uh, NFTs stand for non-fungible tokens. Uh, but what does that really mean? Uh, so just to make sure we're all on the same page here, um, non-fungible tokens, uh, what they really mean is that they're a digital ownership verification. So this is usually for, for tokens uh, that are not interchangeable. So they're different from one another. A lot of people say that they're unique, but they're, they're not necessarily unique. There can be multiple copies of uh, these um, NFTs. Um, so there can be digital ownership uh, verification for um, multiple NFTs um, that different people own. Um, and what are the key char characteristics behind them? Uh, the first is that they're verifiable and that's because they live on the blockchain, right? So they're able to be uh, checked uh, by anyone who has access to a node or simply ether scan much easier. Um, so you can verify um, a lot of key properties behind the NFTs. So you can verify who was the creator behind it uh, and the provenance. So where it comes from, who got it before you, uh, where it's uh, going after, how much you got paid for, uh, those types of uh, key metrics that for uh, physical uh, goods, you don't have a, a ledger um, that's uh, inherent to, to the tokens, to the properties. Um, so they're, they're also programmable in the sense that you can do a lot of things uh, with NFTs um, that as well in the analog world, uh, you have to do additional steps to build on top of that. So for the royalties, uh, they leverage smart contracts uh, in Ethereum or, or other smart contract platforms um, to automatically uh, charge royalties once the NFT uh, 
transfers from address A to address B uh, and uh, so forth. So this is a lot of the emphasized part of NFTs that people, uh, creators can get to profit from their NFTs pretty much in perpetuity if they'd like, whereas in the analog world, uh, you would have to potentially have a contract with every person and trying to enforce it uh, is very hard, especially once it gets sold to people who you don't really know or you're or not in your network. Uh, and you can also adjust um, the NFTs themselves with a lot of these programmable features. I'll, I'll touch on this later. Um, and of course, being digital, uh, they're portable. So you can have them on your phone, on your laptop, your TV. Um, and since they're on the blockchain, you just need the private keys to access it and you can pretty much have it on any digital device. Um, all right, so what can uh, NFTs do? So the, the main, um, I guess, category associated with NFTs so far uh, is arts, arts and collectible. Uh, but in reality, this is just one piece of the spectrum, uh, which encompasses a lot more opportunities. Uh, so for instance, they can also be uh, items in, within games that can be NFTs, they can be financial products, uh, they can be domains, uh, so like ENS, uh, for those familiar with it, and many more. I, I'll touch on these uh, opportunities towards the end of my webinar. Uh, and so far in 2021, uh, they've been astounding, uh, the pace of growth that they've experienced, uh, the NFTs in general. So they had a breakout quarter in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, with multiple million dollar sales, uh, of course, with people's uh, 69 million sale for the uh, 5,000 days being um, widely covered uh, in traditional media, uh, as well, of course, within crypto. Um, and they've been embraced by uh, renowned auction houses like Christie's, with, by musicians like The Weeknd, artists uh, and influencers. Uh, most of them coming uh, from beyond crypto into crypto. So it's also been a good onboarding uh, on ramp for a lot of uh, users and institutions into the crypto world. Uh, and they we've seen throughout 2021 uh, multiple NFT related launches. Um, so more recently, we've seen FTX launching their own NFT marketplace uh, and Binance uh, with announcing that they will launch one soon. However, we've seen a cool down, at least in terms of volume and activity uh, in the second quarter, as usual, really after any big boom. So I'll get into the metrics. Uh, as you guys know, into the block, uh, we're fans of data and we'd like to back all the opinions um, and thoughts on the market with data. So I'll show you guys um, what we've been working on. Uh, and we're approaching this from uh, several categories. Um, for several approaches from several um, viewpoints, I should say. Um, so we, we have the general metrics uh, that work for people that are either new to this space or just to have like an idea of how it's progressed. So a bit more long-term covering uh, overview of the space. We also have metrics uh, that are uh, specifically uh, relevant for creators those that are um, more relevant to collectors or speculators. And finally, uh, those that are for more hardcore fanatics of uh, specific projects. Um, so starting with the general metrics, of course, um, the main ones that people would like to see to see the, the growth of the space uh, has to do with, with sales volume, uh, the top sales. So these uh, tend to stand out. Um, and um, the categories that are uh, sort of leading the way. Um, so I'll dive into these now. In terms of uh, sales, uh, here we see four of the top uh, marketplaces. Uh, there are multiple more, um, but here we see, for instance, the aggregation between Super Rare, Rarible, uh, Known Origin, and Async Art. Uh, within a year, we've seen growth of 120x. Uh, which is insane uh, in terms of monthly sales uh, from basically nothing. Um, year to date, we've seen uh, over 5x. Uh, and over the past month, uh, we've seen growth of, uh, well, negative growth, I should say. So it has, as I was saying, cooled down uh, more recently. Uh, so 43% between all of these. 
And then there's the aggregator, uh, OpenSea, uh, the largest marketplace of them all. So for those not familiar, you can uh, publish your own uh, NFT within OpenSea. But being an aggregator, what they do is literally they scan through the blockchain. And if there's any ERC721, so this is the uh, smart contract uh, standard for uh, NFTs, uh, as well as 1155. I won't get into the technicalities. Uh, but OpenSea, what they do is that they scan through the blockchain and aggregate all of these into one marketplace. Uh, and so uh, essentially they've seen even greater growth, um, as you can see here, uh, over 130x within the past year, uh, 17x um, this year to date alone. So from uh, less than 20 million uh, in January 2021. Uh, and they actually, um, OpenSea did manage to grow 47% um, uh, this past month. Uh, some have um, associated this growth uh, while uh, Rarible and the rest have decreased uh, with the launches of two main projects, which I'll touch on later, uh, which are Mebits uh, and Bored Apes Yacht Club. Um, in terms of the top NFT sales, uh, we put here a uh, very visual experience uh, of uh, the, the highest grossing uh, NFT sales uh, of all time. Um, so we see here, of course, people say for a thousand days, uh, note the logarithmic axis, uh, axis yeah. Uh, and we see, of course, uh, three CryptoPunks amongst the uh, highest selling ones, uh, these costing 4,000 ETH. And here we see one for 800 ETH, I believe and as well as a Decentraland uh, digital real estate um, for nearly 700 ETH, I believe. Uh, I'm just gonna stop real quick because I see, uh, I saw a question in the Q&A. Uh, so Mustafa is asking that if I can clarify how OpenSea is different from other NFT marketplaces. So I'll, I'll just go back quickly. Um, so essentially, if you go into the OpenSea page, uh, you can browse um, by marketplace or by project. And within OpenSea, you can actually buy NFTs that are, are in Rarible, NFTs are in super rare. You can also uh, search uh, by projects so you can buy CryptoPunks. So as, with, as aggregators do, uh, they collect um, the data from all of these and essentially you're able to transact and make transactions for, for these NFTs within a consolidated marketplace, uh, making it easier and having to check marketplace by marketplace. Um, and to me, it's no surprise that they have been uh, so popular. Hope that clarifies uh, your question, Mustafa, and if anyone else had the question. Uh, and moving on um, beyond uh, top NFT sales, um, glad, glad it answered your question, Mustafa. Um, there's also been standout uh, sectors, uh, one that's uh, been quite uh, funny to me, I guess, uh, is the meme monetization um, trend, I guess. So we've seen uh, a lot of memes um, essentially take off in terms of NFT sales. So we see here the Saster girl, uh, the little girl that sees a fire behind her uh, selling for $573,000. Uh, and this really extends beyond memes. So it's, it's pretty much about uh, internet fame. Um, so a lot of these um, creators, I guess, or the people behind these memes weren't able to monetize them directly. And so we see, for instance, Charlie Bit My Finger, uh, the video selling for $760,000. Uh, so they maybe have uh, did make some revenues from the YouTube views, but they actually initially agreed to take the video off YouTube just because, of course, uh, the amount that they can make from selling this NFT at, at this price level is significantly higher to the amount that they've uh, accrued through um, revenues from the just the video being up on YouTube. And even though they had initially agreed to do that, it, it, the, the new owner actually decided that they can uh, leave it in YouTube for everyone to see. Uh, but it, overall, I would say it's an interesting trend as more and more uh, participants uh, seek to capitalize on their internet fame. 
I'll stop quickly for another question. Uh, Luke's asking, why did OpenSea grow while the other marketplaces had a decrease in May? Does it mean that OpenSea had more native NFT sales? Uh, yes, so in, in that case it is. Uh, so you can publish directly in OpenSea. And then what I mentioned is that in May, we saw the launch of two projects, uh, MeBits and uh, Board Ape Yacht Club. Um, so these protocols, uh, these projects, I'm sorry, uh, launched directly on OpenSea. Um, so even though it's an aggregator, you can also launch directly in OpenSea. So those are not reflected in the rest of the marketplaces. Carrying on, um, there's also uh, an approach to look into NFT analytics uh, from the mentality of being a creator uh, as well as a collector. And we bundle these two uh, because in reality, uh, these metrics are uh, very um, relevant for both. Um, and they, there's very uh, there's a connection between them. So there's key metrics like, for instance, the average selling price of NFTs, uh, of course, is very relevant. And we've seen the average selling price uh, really increase remarkably uh, throughout the, the past year or so. Um, so if you go from the beginning, it's pretty much uh, 10x as logarithmic access again. Um, so even though some uh, marketplaces like Rarewall, which is the, the largest in terms of um, revenue out of these, uh, or super rare, even though the average price has uh, decreased slightly, they still remain quite high. Uh, in terms of collectors, it's also a very relevant uh, metric. We've seen uh, a huge spike in March um, with, the with the market, but then uh, it has declined. So this is something worth keeping in mind uh, if you're an, an artist. It uh, essentially means that there's probably less people uh, buying, even though those, those, uh, those that are actually buying are buying higher amounts or higher quality, I, I guess, of NFTs, especially when you consider the number of monthly collectors versus the, num the amount of volume taking place. So it's, it's a bit more concentrated, I should say, in for OpenSea. Uh, I have a few more questions. Uh, Olga's asking, uh, what is OpenSea? Uh, yeah, that, that's what I've been uh, explaining. It's probably the biggest uh, marketplace and they aggregate NFTs. Um, so from digital art to collectibles to real estate, well, digital real estate uh, in one consolidated marketplace. And here we see the, the growth and cool down in NFT collectors just in OpenSea. And going back to the specified uh, marketplaces, um, we've seen um, new artists increase um, as well remarkably in the past year. Uh, but as, as well as with collectors, we've, we're seeing uh, interest slow down uh, in most marketplaces in, in the second quarter. Um, Another trend that I've been spotting um, is the transition from primary sales to secondary sales. Um, so back in, for instance, July 2020, when first uh, NFT marketplaces started um, to increase, I wouldn't say boom, but back then it did seem like a boom. Um, it was mostly primary sales. And right now uh, this has shifted significantly to secondary sales. Uh, and there's major implications behind that for both if you're a collector or if you're a creator. Um, so for collectors, uh, essentially this incentivizes, in my opinion, um, speculation, because if most of the sales come directly from the artist and, and what you want to do is resell or like flip the NFT, uh, if, if the market's mostly through primary sales, uh, then that doesn't create an opportunity for you. But once uh, secondary sales dominate, like I'm showing in this graph, uh, essentially there's a market for people who's buying and selling NFTs. Uh, of course, there's a lot of risk uh, associated with trying to do this, uh, but there's a potential opportunity therein as well. And for creators, um, this creates um, more focus on the royalties. So this is, means that they can uh, essentially profit from uh, passive income, from earning from their pieces being sold and resold again, um, and potentially maybe even have to create less. 
I'll stop quickly for another question. Uh, Joseph is asking, uh, in your opinion, why did the amount of collectors decline? Uh, I, to be honest, I think this is just natural uh, with pretty much anything that grows so quickly in such little time. So you can see here it, it 5x uh, within two months from January to March. Um, and essentially there was a very, very big um, hype surrounding NFTs um, that expanded beyond um, traditional crypto. So I believe even uh, Gronkowski, the football player, uh, launched uh, an NFT in, in March in OpenSea. Um, and it got, it became like a cycle of more and more creators jumping across disciplines into NFTs. And then as prices started to decline um, and the market cooled down, this also led to less ink, less um, interest in the space and subsequently less uh, buyers in the space. It uh, doesn't mean that it's going back to zero. I, I for one believe this is probably going to make newer highs um, within the next year or two. Um, there's still a lot uh, of evolution to come, which I'll touch on soon. Um, carrying on, uh, we also have uh, particular metrics uh, that are important for people to keep an eye on uh, regarding uh, specific projects. Um, so for instance, in, in terms of what I mean by projects are like collections of NFTs, um, not necessarily a collection, but like a group of NFTs, the most popular ones I'll touch on now. So for instance, CryptoPunks, MeBits, HashMasks, and Board, App, Board Apes Yacht Club, which I've been touching on. Uh, we see here the average prices, uh, of course, increased remarkably for CryptoPunks uh, to 30 ETH at some point, and one ETH was at like $3,000. So uh, quite a steep uh, price for an NFT. Um, of course, them CryptoPunks being the, the first NFT, even uh, preceding the ERC721 standard. Uh, and we see um, that uh, even though they've remained quite high, um, uh, they've managed to decrease in price. Um, so this might also have to do with the question uh, that was asked before uh, about the amount of collectors declining. Uh, and we also see uh, the amount of trading volume uh, plummeting. So here, the weekly transaction volume uh, with CryptoPunks has declined significantly. So there's likely a lot less speculation taking place, even though uh, necessarily, so like prices didn't crash as much. So this probably means that there's um, a lot less speculation, but there's still uh, a high amount of uh, holders that um, don't want to sell their crypto funds. And there's uh, additional perks uh, around a lot of these specific NFT projects. Um, so they can vary significantly. I'll touch on the hash masks uh, NCT token uh, just after this, but other ones uh, are uh, that are, I find interesting are using NFTs as a membership. So for uh, Bored Apes Yacht Club, um, as the name implies, um, there's a membership uh, club behind it to which you can access only being uh, an owner of one of these NFTs and you can access it on chain and you reach a select group uh, or community <coughs> behind it. Uh, there's also the, the additional perk for MeBits that they're envisioned to be uh, like an avatar for the metaverse, which you can use uh, across games. Um, I believe there's this, this functionality is still on beta, uh, but it's a pretty cool use case. Uh, regarding hash masks, uh, they have their own, so they're an ERC721, the hash mask itself, so this, this is an example, but they also have an NCT token uh, tied with them, so it's called the name change token, and it is a utility token. So what it does, it's, it allows you, it allows the holders of the hash mask to uh, use their NCT tokens and burn them to change the name of their hash masks. And tied to domain names, uh, these names are unique and there can't be any other names. So once it's taken, it's there. And 
allegedly this could increase the value of your hash mask. So having a cool name, for instance, and having the right to change the name uh, had value, at least in terms of having a market behind it. Uh, and this tokens, uh, every hash mask earns 10 NCT tokens per day. Um, and this allows multiple changes of their name. And once it's used, these tokens are burned. So the supply is no longer accessed and there's no more issuance in 10 years. So uh, potentially this can create um, demand for those seeking to own hash mask and change their uh, hash mask names. I have a couple of questions, but I'll, I'll just carry, not carry on now <clears throat> since we're almost done and I'll get into questions later. So uh, NFTs have already evolved significantly uh, in the past few years, but they have a lot to go. They have, uh, they're still in the early stages, in my opinion. Um, so one of the, the things is that using NFTs, uh, both creating them or minting them uh, and transferring them can be very expensive. Uh, so of course, uh, this has to do a lot with the base blockchain, which they're built on top of. So using it on uh, Flow um, might be cheaper than using it on, on Ethereum, but within Ethereum, it can also be made a lot cheaper by integrating with layer two scaling solutions. So this should make it uh, a lot cheaper and faster. And we're seeing a lot of this being done um, in the past, well, uh, being executed in the past few months by really being in the, in the works uh, for the past few years. Um, as well, uh, one concern that might have spooked a lot of uh, newcomers uh, are the headlines uh, regarding um, the environmental effect of NFTs, which in reality is just of the blockchain itself. Um, but still, uh, there's no denying that uh, blockchains do consume a lot of uh, energy with proof of work. So the transition to proof of stake uh, with Ethereum and the merge happening in, in late this year or early next year should uh, ease these concerns from environmental advocates or pretty much anyone at this point. Uh, as well, there should be um, um, steps made towards cross-chain bridging of NFTs. So this can get a bit technical, but essentially it's just the idea of moving uh, a blockchain, uh, an NFT from one blockchain to another. And this can be beneficial because in different blockchains, you can access different applications and you can also uh, access different um, trade-offs in terms of uh, prices and fees, for instance. So you might be able to move your NFT to Polygon or to BSC, to Flow, etc. So this would make it a lot more flexible. Uh, within use cases, uh, I believe um, as soon as uh, it, it gets made a lot cheaper uh, and there's less concerns with environment, uh, people can really start expanding with the use cases. So digital art, as I mentioned, uh, really took off, but they, they have a lot more use cases. So for instance, um, there's identity uh, and there's some projects playing around with all of these ideas that I've listed here. For identity, um, you can, for instance, uh, do a course uh, um, on 1729, which is a website from um, Balaji, uh, the CTO from Coinbase. Uh, and you can have like a proof that you've completed a course uh, which lives on the blockchain and you can have it tied to your pseudonymous identity uh, that you've completed that course. Uh, and you can potentially have like an NFT badge saying uh, you've have made, you've done the Solidity course or whatever course it is, and you can have that associated to your address and essentially giving you uh, uh, credentials on chain, which I find pretty cool. Uh, there's also another project called Yat, which ties your identity with an emoji that lives on the blockchain and then integrates with, uh, with other applications on chain. Uh, in terms of tickets, uh, we've seen uh, here, for instance, uh, Zoo, uh, released NFTs for attendance of the his uh, Dream Rocks, uh, Red Rocks um, um, concert, uh, the Dallas Mavericks, uh, of course, with Mark Cuban being very bullish on NFTs. Uh, they are mentioning they're looking to issue tickets uh, on chain, which, as I've mentioned, would, would allow them the possibility to 
earn uh, royalties, uh, well, not royalties, but uh, sales from uh, secondary sales, they could get a commission, which is a big issue, of course, with ticketing right now. Um, in the supply chain world, uh, there is advance being made uh, with Nike patenting uh, crypto kicks, which is a certificate for shoes on the blockchain uh, of the MH with uh, bags, having a digital certificate that you can scan with your phone and verify that it's an actual uh, official product and they might have an online experience associated with these. <clears throat> and finally, I've touched on a bit is the metaverse um, use cases, uh, which allow you to have multiple NFTs in, in a single experience. So for instance, in the central land, you can have land that itself uh, can be represented with an NFT on top of it. You build your house and you can have paintings that can be represented with NFTs. Your character can be an NFT. So there's multiple aspects of it that can be integrated uh, with the metaverse. The crypto voxels is a similar platform as well. Uh, I'm also, um, I, we're also seeing a lot of uh, growth in the combination between NFTs and DeFi. Uh, so for instance, Stani Kulichov of Aave um, say, just recently said that they'll be accepting NFTs as collateral in the Aave lending platform. Uh, you can also potentially uh, do fractional buying of NFTs through NFTX. So if you can't afford one CryptoPunk, you can buy a fraction of a CryptoPunk in their uh, CryptoPunk index, which is backed by actual CryptoPunks. Uh, you can have uh, rights to an LP position, a liquidity providing position in Uniswap V3 right now with them, uh, with an NFT. Uh, and finally, for instance, uh, one thing that's a bit further down the road, um, but it's probably coming, is having real world assets uh, such as your car, uh, which I, as I mentioned, um, you can have the supply chain uh, validated with an NFT and have like a, a, a specific code that you're not guaranteeing that you're the owner of your car um, or another product and have it on chain and use that to get financial services um, through DeFi. Um, <clears throat> So of course, there's a lot of things going on with NFTs uh, and add into the block, in case you hadn't noticed, uh, we're, we're doing a lot of work with it, with them. So we're working on a new experience uh, with consolidated metrics from multiple viewpoints. And one of my favorite aspects is that it'll be a visual journey. So here's a sneak peek into what we're building. Um, so we have a general overview of the NFT space covering marketplaces, uh, projects, as I've mentioned, we want to have uh, this as a scrolling carousel uh, of trending NFTs. Uh, the idea is to have this link directly to OpenSea, uh, which I've mentioned multiple times throughout the presentation. Uh, the, the idea is you'll be able to click here, go to the marketplace and directly buy um, the NFTs that you're seeing. Uh, we will have top sales, the most valuable projects, um, sales by marketplace, the royalties, the number of unique addresses holding NFTs. There's a lot of stuff we're, we're working on and, and we want to get this in, into the market uh, within the next couple of months. Uh, and best of all, it should be free for anyone to access. Uh, so we're very excited about this. Uh, and well, um, to conclude uh, quickly, uh, NFTs, uh, we believe are still in the early stages. After having a breakout quarter in Q1, uh, we see a cool down in activity and interest in the space uh, as usual. Uh, I would liken it to what happened in DeFi um, after DeFi summer. Um, so I would expect it to continue to grow in the second half of this year uh, and so forth. Uh, and the uh, real opportunities, in my opinion, are still to come. So it's exciting time uh, for the space. Um, well, uh, thanks everyone for, for joining me. Uh, our next webinar will be on Polygon, uh, which of course has seen a, a boom of interest and activity uh, being a side chain for Ethereum. Um, thanks everyone again, hope you guys enjoyed and now I'll be answering uh, the questions that I've uh, had for a while here. So uh, we're seeing, okay, Daniel, uh, as asking, uh, I'm a musician, uh, wondering if there's any opportunity in the NFT space for musicians. Yes, definitely there are. Uh, we're actually, we've actually seen a lot of musicians already get into the space. 
uh, there's multiple platforms. I can't remember the name of uh, right now, uh, but that they allow you to tokenize uh, your song. So in, rather than having the file uh, like this, for instance, you can have uh, the actual song tokenized and can be owned uh, by a person or multiple. Uh, you can also, if you have live shows, uh, you can use this as a certificate that you're like a hardcore um, fan um, and you went to an event. Um, more famously, the DJ Blau, um, he sold his album for, I believe, $11 million as an NFT. Uh, and with that, it wasn't just the album, but it allowed like a whole experience of like having that NFT being used as uh, backstage tickets for any of his shows and uh, the right to have like a session with him to create a song. So there's multiple ways. Uh, and to be honest, uh, you, there's just a creativity involved in finding how to use them, but there's multiple options you can use, uh, Daniel, to, to use NFTs as an artist, as a musician. Um, Mustafa is asking, I currently subscribe and I'm wondering if there will ever be a mobile native app for Into the Block. Uh, hi Mustafa, yeah, thanks for subscribing to Into the Block. Uh, we are aware that there's a demand for a mobile native app. Um, right now, we're still a small team, but we're aiming to grow our team. And along with that, of course, uh, comes the evolution into having uh, an app. Right now, what I would recommend is simply to have a web app so I have here in my phone into the block and you can access it really quickly. Uh, just in, in Chrome, you can say that save to home screen, I believe it's a setting. So that should be a quick fix until then. Uh, Valentin is asking, is, there, is the market liquid for NFTs? It's a great question. Uh, and the reality is for most independent NFTs, it's not liquid. <clears throat> I wanted to go to this slide. Uh, because uh, NFTX is creating indices uh, for NFTs that make them a lot more liquid and they're tradable, I believe, in SushiSwap. So for one CryptoPunk itself, uh, out of only 10,000, um, as I showed, the trading volume had declined significantly. So maybe if you wanted to sell an, a CryptoPunk here, it would be very liquid. But right now it's not. Uh, and this I'm talking about the largest project uh, probably uh, for NFTs. So what NFTX does is that they tokenize all the indices, all the crypto punks that are supplied to a smart contract and make an index for them. So what this does is it allows uh, a bigger market for them, uh, but also uh, the, the people that are providing the NFTs to the index earn trading fees. So it creates incentives to make um, NFTs more liquid and more accessible. And, and there's a lot of progress being done into making them even more uh, accessible and liquid. Uh, yes, um, Jacob is mentioning audience is worth looking at. Uh, good, good point. Um, yeah, they don't, I don't, to my knowledge, I think actually they recently launched an NFT section where artists can have NFTs uh, tied to them. <laughs> but I haven't checked it in a while. I downloaded it like a year ago, but I've heard there. They've done a lot of things and, and they have the audio token granting governance rights over the platform, which is pretty cool. Uh, anonymous attendee is asking, do you think there are regional opportunities for NFTs, Africa, Asia, etc.? cetera? Um, yes, I, I do actually. I have a good friend of mine uh, who's a designer in this space uh, and he's worked with Nike and other brands and he, he has a, a group of uh, artists uh, in South America uh, who uh, are designers uh, just as a hobby and and they're essentially bringing like more cultural approach to like traditional art for, for bringing it digital um, so that's one example that I'm aware of um, they can bring in culture online is uh, bridge being bridged by NFTs in my opinion so I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see uh, sort of this mix between local uh, communities uh, for NFTs online as well, which is pretty cool. And of course, it's a very big opportunity for underserved communities. A uh, couple more questions. Um, which blockchain other than Ethereum has the most activity in NFTs? Um, Hi, one. so I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
uh, other than Ethereum um, flow from Dapper Labs has a lot of uh, activity uh, with um, Top Shots, uh, the NBA um, NFTs. Um, Wax also has it's a separate blockchain. I believe they have a couple of games that are live and they're like a blockchain that have, has been since the early days committed to the vision of NFTs. Um, and Ethereum, of course, is um, in my, to my knowledge, they're still the leader though, um, in terms of total activity, uh, even though Flow has done a remarkable job, um, but it's only one product so far to my knowledge. Uh, uh, someone's asking if there will be a recording. Yes, no worries. Um, there will be recording. Feel free to watch it over if you missed the part. Uh, last question. Uh, what are your thoughts on generative art? Similar to art blocks. Yeah, uh, they, I, I think they're pretty cool. Uh, actually, some of the largest uh, projects are uh, done with generative art. So what this means is essentially there's an algorithm behind it uh, that is, has the parameters for like certain characteristics. So for this board eight yacht, uh, board eight yacht club, sorry, <laughs> they have the parameters for like the hat, the face, the shirt, and like the skin color and the background color. And any of these uh, parameters um, have a provable level of rarity. Uh, and essentially they create a program such that uh, they randomize it and uh, the degree um, of, of, each, of each piece gets adapted. So Artblock, Artblocks is a platform that allows for the creation of multiple projects of uh, uh, generative art in NFTs. Uh, and I think they've been pretty successful. Uh, I believe CryptoPunks is the first example of this and the team behind Larva Labs. <laughs> and it's pretty cool because you have provable, uh, provable information that, uh, that uh, of the rarity of each of these traits. Uh, but it's still very early. Uh, I have a couple of friends working in this space and they envision it um, that will become much greater and potentially as it's programmable, uh, have multiple opportunities and uh, linking them into DeFi and other um, parts of the blockchain, especially as it becomes cheaper and more accessible. Okay, I have a few more questions, but unfortunately, I got to leave. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Uh, you guys were all very attentive. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, and make sure to come to the next one. Bye.